Hello everyone, Tina here. I'm back again to share with you a few projects. Um, I hope your day is going just wonderful. Thanks so much for stopping by. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. Before I get started, if you guys like the video content, um, let me know down below in the description area. Um, and also hit that subscribe button. It just um, helps YouTube push my videos to other crafters who um, like the same content. So if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for me. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be using the embossing folder of the month club kit from Spellbinders and also the clear stamp and die of the month club kit from Spellbinders. These are the June 2023 kits and they're available for purchase for a monthly subscription so you would automatically get a monthly embossing folder. Um, of the, if you join the club and same with the stamp and die now there is the 3d embossing folder of the month club kit this is just a regular one the, the regular embossing folder and then there's also a clear stamp that has the same stamp just without the dies so if you have an electronic die cutting machine and you don't need the dies or if you prefer fussy cutting and keeping it economical then just getting the clear stamp club um is for you. I'll list both of those down below if you want to check it out. But we are going to create two fun cards and this is ocean themed and I love that but I'm going to create some cards that are really playful today. Um, and I'm also going to be doing some reverse stamping with this whale. So we're going to start off by creating our first our background and to do that we'll emboss a panel, two of them actually, with our splish splash embossing folder. And I'm just going to take some white cardstock. We'll flip it around here. And I will run this through and then I'll grab some inks. This is what our embossing folder looks like. You can see how it kind of has that florally, florally note to it. So this would be great with florals too. But it has those little splatters. Um, I'm going to color in my background with two different Distress Oxide inks. I have Salvage Patina and I also have Salty Ocean. Both of these we're going to just color in the same. I'm going to start with my Salvage Patina. And I'll just use my blending tools. And I'm going to go over the entire panel here. I'm just going to do one and I'll do the other one off camera. Now I'm putting a lot of pressure on this because I just, I want to fill in the area behind the embossed detail too. Now that our background's covered, this is where I'm going to bring in my Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink. Now for this one, I want to put less pressure on because I want to just light, I want to go over the raised area, the embossed area, and I want a two-tone look. So I'm just going to lightly go over it. And I'm just using swishy motions for this. And you can see that you can see the salvage patina behind it. And I just love the way this looks. So there is our beautiful black background panel. You know, that looks really pretty, but I think I'm I think I'm gonna go one step further th further and bring in one more ink. I'm gonna bring in my chip sapphire. And I want to see if I can get even a, a more intense color. Let's slightly go over one. Oh, yes. I'm going to go over the chip sapphire just in a few different sections. I think that looks really pretty. Let me show you up close. Sometimes when, I far, when I'm far away, it looks like a hot mess. But in real life, up close, it looks really pretty. I'm going to do the same thing, adding some darker tones to this one. So just lightly going over it. Just in certain areas. And I think that's just perfect. So Chip Fat Sapphire Salty Ocean and Salvage Patina. Now I'm going to clean off my work surface. And I'm going to give this a little a chance to dry. While my panels are, we're going to eventually trim down those panels we just created, but in the meantime, we're going to do some stamping. And I mentioned reverse stamping, and what we're going to do is take our stamp set, bring in our stamping positioner. 
We're going to start by taking a piece of white cardstock, alcohol marker friendly, and we're going to stamp the whale. This is VersaFine ink. I think VersaFine ink works great, the best for reverse stamping. Um, although if you're going to do Copic coloring, um, it's best to heat emboss with clear embossing powder because this is not alcohol marker friendly. And so if you heat emboss it, you won't smear it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my VersaFine, ink up my whale, and I'm going to stamp one whale first. And then I'm going to go over this with some clear embossing powder. And then I will, we'll melt these at the same time. So I'll put that off to the side. To do the reverse stamping, it's super duper easy. And it's using something you already have. We're going to take the backing off of our stamp set. You have a protective covering. And we all have the same one. Well, almost. Mine has tape on it. Yours probably don't have tape. But um, uh, you, what you're going to do is take your plastic. You don't have to trim it or anything. Just put it in your stamping positioner. Just make sure that it's in the corner. I have a sticky mat on mine so it's adhering. If you don't have a sticky mat, you can use a magnet. And then I'm going to take my VersaFine once more. I will ink up my whale and I'm going to stamp it on that plastic. Wonderful. Now I'm going to take my piece of cardstock and I'm going to go over it. And then I'm going to press down really good. The residual ink that's left over from the first stamping is going to create a secondary image that doesn't look secondary. It actually looks really good. <laughs> That's the nice thing about VersaFine. And then what you can do is pick up and there you have your image. So it's almost as dark as the first image. Now while this is still wet, what I'm going to do is take my clear embossing powder on this image and I'm going to go over it. And maybe I should have treated my paper with my anti-static powder, but I think we're doing good. I'm going to melt this along with this one. Both are melted. I'm going to put this away. And to clean off your acetate, you can, you can still reuse this. Just use your stamp cleaner or even a baby wipe would take it off. And then, just using a towel, you would just wipe it off. And you can put it right back on your stamp and you're good to go. You can actually clean off this one too. So pretty easy to recreate a reverse image. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back. Now I'm gonna color in my images. And I will be right back. My images are colored in. I just used some warm grays. Very easy to do. And then what I forgot to do was stamp my little crab. So since my crab is a little bit detailed on the smaller side and I'm not going to do a reverse with it, I'm just going to stamp this. And I'll color these in too. But I want to share with you um, the nice thing about, let me grab my die. This is our die that will cut this out, right? And obviously you can't use it on this side. But since we have that secondary image on the reverse side, my ink bled through my paper. But it's easy to line up because it's in the same exact position. Let me show you real quick. I will tape this down. Okay, so this is the reverse side, remember? But it's in the exact same position. So you don't have to worry about getting it lined up or die cutting first because you have the front and the back. So cool, huh? I'm gonna color in both my little crabbies. I'm gonna use some reds and some coral colors and I'll die cut out this whale and then we're gonna put a, together a card. 
Okay, I have my images die cut out and colored in. You can see the corally color and then I have a red one. I did stamp my sentiment. I have water you up to and I also have whale hello there. And there's coordinating dies that will cut out the sentiments too. I think that's wonderful because if you have a textured background, popping things up are really nice. I'm gonna put these off to the side and we're gonna work on our background now. We're gonna trim down our inked up panel just using the paper trimmer. And I created two panels, but I th you probably could get away with just creating one panel for both cards today. But I'm gonna trim this down to a three inch panel. So it's three inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Now, since I like inking off the edges, you can see how it's nice and white here, and then these aren't. What I do is just take my blending tool and just go around the edges. That way you can't see the cut line and it's kind of continuous. So our panel is good as new. Now I'm gonna take this panel and I'm gonna use a circle die and I'm gonna create a window on one side. Since I had my postage edge, I was playing around with my backgrounds, and since I had my circles out, I'm gonna use one of my circles here. And I'm gonna add a circle inside this window panel. Now I'm gonna take my postage edge background. This is from Spellbinders, and then I'm gonna just keep it white, and I'm gonna adhere this directly on my card base. And my card base today is a top folding A2 size card base. I just like a little bit of, um, a little something for my background. And I think the postage edge works really good. Okay, so we have this adhered. And I do have two pieces of pattern paper. This is diagonal striped black and white. And then I, I found one through my stash, my six by six paper pads. And I found some um, red polka dot pattern paper. I think that's gonna go really good with our blue. I'm gonna doctor up this panel on the right edge, and to do that, I'm gonna add my polka dot paper. I need to tuck that tape behind so you can't see it. And then I will add this to the right side, just lining up those edges, and then I'll trim away the excess. Now I have that very thin strip of black and white diagonal stripe paper. I'm gonna use my glue and I'm gonna go over the, the seam with it. Just a thin bead and then we can attach this right along the seam here. Now I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna bring in my twine. My but This is the, um, it's, I'm just calling it hemp cord, but they have red and black and white. And I'm gonna use the red here, and I'm gonna add a bow along that seam. I'll adjust it in just a minute. I'm gonna tie the bow first. So we have, and I will trim away the tails of the twine. Put this, we're gonna use this for our next card, so I'll keep that out, and then So we have a little bit of texture on our card. Now this is gonna go right here. I'm gonna pop it up with some foam tape along with our crabs and our water you up to. I'm gonna crisscross both of our little crabs here in that circle section. I'm not gonna press down because I still wanna add my, my sentiment right below it. I think that's a good spot there. Such a cute little fun card. I just love the way that looks. Okay, so that's card number one. I am gonna go in with a few gems, but we'll do that all together at the end. We're gonna jump in with our next card. For my next panel, I'm taking that leftover piece. So I didn't end up using this. So you, I have an extra one for a quick and easy card. But I am gonna trim a half of an inch off of this. So this panel will fit inside my postage edge. This is from the same postage edge die set. Um, it's the second postage 
there's three different sizes. This is the middle size. So I'll take my paper trimmer and we'll trim a half of an inch off. And then I'm going to go in with my blending tool once more and go around the edge since it's that white edge. And we'll just darken up all of the edges actually. Okay, we're going to adhere this on the inside edge of our postage panel. Wonderful. Now for this card, since our wheels are on the longer side, I already put foam tape behind them. Um, I thought we'd make a, la um, a landscape style card. And so I did use my postage edge die. This is the, this one. This is nice. It has dotted detail on it. But I used this to cut out my panel. You can't see the dotted detail. But I'm going to have the same card stock we used for our first card. I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to place my pattern paper panel right in the middle here. And then I'm going to adhere our splish splash panel right on the top. I think the polka dots just make it extra fun. <laughs> okay, and then I have about a quarter inch strip of that same black and white striped paper. And I'm going to add some glue behind here and we're going to layer it all the way across from our card base. So, so far we're all one layer. But believe it or not, the card stock, when you layer them together, it, it does add a little bit of dimension. But I'm going to place this a little bit towards the bottom on that panel. I just love those colors together. Now we can add our whales. I thought since we are, we have well, hello there. I just thought that was super cute. <laughs> um, I'm going to have our wheels kind of placed wonky on this panel so that they're kind of swimming towards each other. And then I popped up my sentiment. That's going to go in that area right over our black and white stripe. Just think that looks so fun. <laughs> so that card is good to go. I am going to bring in some of my Spellbinders um, color essential gems. And I picked my silver mix because this, you have the real silver ones and you have the, these ones are almost like a clear. And we will add a few over here. A few of the smaller ones. It's a new little trick that I learned. Instead of using your tool in one, use your, your wax tool to pick up your gems. It's so much easier, guys. It's just a breeze. Watch. You pick it up. You just kind of slide them up. And then you can add even the tiniest ones. You know how we always fussy with those tiny ones? The tiny ones come right up using your wax tool. So we have a few little gems here. So... That's a little trick today I shared with you. Okay, and we'll put these off to the side. Now for this card, I do want to bring in some more of that twine. And I'm just going to wrap it on the inside. Because you know I like my textures. And I am going to do one more thing before I go. Because it's the little details that add so much. So I added my twine over here, and I am going to do one more detail. I want to bring in my Onyx Color Essential Gems. And I'm going to replace the whale eyes. These make great replacements for whale eyes. And again, I'm going to use my wax pencil to pick it up. So much easier than the, than the tool in one. We'll go ahead and replace those eyes with a smaller smaller one and I think these ones are just too small so I'm not well maybe let's try these and I'm going to replace the ones on the crabs too so we have a little extra dimension there and a little extra texture perfect 
Okay, and then that finishes my card projects today. Today we're using the Spellbinders Clear Stamp and Die of the Month Club Kit for June uh, 2023. It's called um, Water You Up To. Super fun. And also the embossing folder of the Month Club Kit. Um, it's called Splish Splash. So everything is listed down below that I used today. Thanks for joining me. Have a fabulous rest of your week. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.